On the 28th of July 1987, over 40 years since the end of the Second World War, a 79-year-old man walked out to face a firing squad and opposite him was stood his executioners, armed with their weapons. His final statement to the courtroom claimed, I didn't want this, but the executioner of Fyodor Fedorenko was one which brought an end to the conduct of thousands of war criminals who committed horrors during the deadliest conflict in human history. In the years after the conflict, there were dozens of concentration camp guards, male and female, who went to gallows structures across Germany, with hangmen such as John C. Woods and Albert Pierpoint executing them. But the decision to execute Fyodor Fedorenko was one which was debatable, as in the years following, those convictions of war criminals who worked inside camps were only prison sentences due to their age, but the Soviets ruthlessly executed an almost 80-year-old man for his Second World War conduct. Join us today as we look at the last execution of the Second World War, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Fyodor Fedorenko was born on the 17th of September 1907 in around the Crimea. Little is known about his conduct before the Second World War broke out, as he was called up to serve inside the Red Army in June 1941, around the time that the Germans launched Operation Barbarossa. Hitler's invasion of the Soviet Union even surprised Joseph Stalin, who never believed that the Germans would invade, as they had previously signed a non-aggression pact. It was launched on the 22nd of June 1941, and it became the deadliest and largest land offensive in history, and over 10 million soldiers were involved. It was believed that the two nations who had different beliefs, Nazi Germany and the Soviets, would not go to war for a period of 10 years due to the molotov ribbentrop Pact, and the countries even divided Poland up between them. But Hitler broke the treaty, and he wanted to destroy Bolshevism and Communism. However, during the Eastern Front campaign, 3.8 million soldiers entered the Western Soviet Union along a front of around 3,000 kilometres, and they were backed up by around 600,000 vehicles and more than 600,000 horses. This opened up the Eastern Front, and it would become the deadliest theatre of the Second World War, and some of the biggest battles in history erupted. There were scores of atrocities and war crimes committed by the Germans along their way, to their objectives and goals. The Nazis deliberately starved to death over three million prisoners of war, and millions of civilians died from the huge food shortages caused by sieges and blockades. But also the Einsatzgruppen, the Nazi death squads, would follow up the German army's advances, and they would round up civilians inside of settlements and lands, and order them to dig mass graves. These civilians dug the large pits, then in small groups they were led into them, and they were executed in cold blood by groups of executioners, and many of these crimes today have still not yet been uncovered, such was the wide-scale slaughter. There were more horrors, as German forces would also burn villages to the ground, and would pillage homes and loot whatever they could find. Hitler also administered a number of illegal orders for Soviet commissars to be shot immediately without any questions asked, and because of this thousands were executed by this. This order would later come back to haunt a number of senior Nazi officials too, as they were later condemned for their actions regarding this. Fyodor Fedorenko was a truck driver, and he had little experience in fighting, as many members of the Red Army also were thrust into the fight against the German army. This mentality led to huge losses, Within a couple of weeks, Fedorenko was encircled by the German army and he managed to escape the first time but was then captured by the enemy and he was sent on to different camps before he arrived at the Helm prison of war camp in Poland. At this specific prison of war camp, he was recruited for military training and to serve his enemies as an auxiliary policeman and Fedorenko was sent to the Travniki concentration camp to learn how to become a Travniki man who acted as an executioner inside of the camps. These were men who were considered collaborators, and they operated the gas chambers, and they drove prisoners inside of them, inside the extermination centres, and also they served as firing squads. It was said on one instance that, that German soldiers had to take cover to avoid being hit. They rampaged throughout different captured sites and cities, and conducted mass slaughter. Fedorenko was part of the shooters who were deployed to all major sites of slaughter inside of the final solution 
and he conducted massacre following the civilians being rounded up. Civilians were forced into huge pits where they were then slaughtered. In the spring of 1942, Fedorenko was sent to the Lublin ghetto, and around 30,000 Jews were sent to their deaths on cattle trucks to Belzec extermination camp, and 4,000 were sent to Majdanek, where they were then also killed. Fedorenko stated that he was given a rifle, but he never fired this, and he was then sent to the Warsaw ghetto with a battalion of around 80 to 100 executioners before he was then sent to Treblinka. Inside here, he also operated the gas chambers, and from September 1942 to August 1943, he was in charge of a 200-strong ex-Soviet soldier battalion who forced prisoners at Treblinka to undress, and these were then driven into the gas chambers, with Fedorenko leading this. His men beat and hurt prisoners on the way to the gas chambers. It was said in a report regarding his activities that Fedorenko had the rank of an SS Oberwoschmann. He was an assistant to the commander of the 1st Platoon of Guards Company in the Treblinka death camp. He came together with me from the city of Warsaw to the Treblinka death camp. He took part in the shootings of citizens of Jewish nationality during the unloading of trains in the undressing places to the gas chambers and to the infirmary. At the end of 1943 he left for Danzig as part of a company of guards. I did not meet him again and do not know where he is now. But at the end of the Second World War, he knew that he would be a wanted and hunted war criminal, as the Soviets did search for him, and he left his wife and two children who stayed in the Soviet Union, and he lived as a war refugee in West Germany. He then managed to emigrate to America in 1949, and was later granted permanent residency, working inside of a brass factory. He lived a quiet life inside of America, but was identified as a possible war criminal, and survivors of Treblinka had identified him as a guard from photographs and documents. He was then included in a list of war criminals, but Fedorenko then moved to Miami Beach in Florida. Information was being collected on Fyodor Fedorenko, and he was arrested in June 1978, and he denied that he had entered the extermination camps. He said that he'd once been a guard inside the guard towers, and that, I saw how they were loading up dead people, loading them onto stretchers, and they were loading them in a hole. He also claimed that some prisoners were picked for work and others were sent to the gas chambers. Fedorenko claimed he'd been forced to work at Treblinka, that he mistreated no one. But six survivors of the camp testified that he had in fact committed many horrors inside of the camp, including beating and shooting prisoners. One man claimed he saw Fedorenko whip and shoot prisoners, and another claimed he was whipped by him, and these witnesses all testified saying they saw him take the lives of others. One judge claimed that these witnesses were unreliable, and he ruled that Fedorenko had actually been a victim of Nazi aggression, and he was allowed to keep his US citizenship. However, in December 1984, Fedorenko became the first Nazi war criminal who was deported from America to the Soviet Union. It was claimed that he spent weeks a free man inside of the Soviet Union, drinking in his hometown, until he was then, in January 1985, arrested by the KGB. His family disowned him during this Soviet trial, and he spent a year in prison before he stood trial in the Crimean Regional Court. This trial began on the 10th of June 1986, and every day the courtroom was filled with around 500 people who wanted to witness the proceedings. But these witnesses were angry at Fedorenko's Second World War conduct, and it was said they wanted to rip him apart. Witnesses testified against him again, and he claimed that he had not partaken in any violent actions except two executions, which he stated were justified. The prosecutor in the case insisted that Fedorenko should be executed, but his defence wanted leniency, as he was a man who was nearly 80. The court stated that when Fedorenko was in Treblinka, that around 800,000 people were killed, and his nine-day trial ended when he was sentenced to death, on the 19th of June, 1986. He lost all of his belongings, and when the verdict was announced, there was an applause in the courtroom. He told the courtroom that, I did not want this, as he wept, and then within six weeks, he would be executed. The method of execution he faced was firing squad, and this would have been performed inside of a Soviet prison, or an execution chamber. On the 20th of July, 1987, Fyodor Fedorenko was executed 
near to where he was convicted by a Soviet firing squad at the age of 79. Little accounts survive about the specifics of his execution, but this made Fedorenko the last person executed due to their conduct during the Second World War. The conflict had been over 40 years, but the Soviets still deemed it necessary to execute a man who had been an instrumental cog in the slaughter of thousands inside of the death camps. Fedorenko was deemed as a dangerous traitor, but he is remembered today as the last man executed for his actions during the Second World War. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.